What happened to Gail Joyner 50 years ago? In 1972, 13-year-old Gail Joyner disappeared while taking an afternoon walk near her home in Thinota, Sassa, Florida. On the afternoon of September 22, Joyner came home from school, ate a snack, and then left to walk her pet raccoon, Bandit, on his leash. Witnesses later came forward claiming to have seen Joyner standing near a white car parked on the edge of the road, but nobody saw her enter the vehicle. She and Bandit never returned home. An exhaustive search, including one of a local trash pit called in by an anonymous tipster, failed to uncover any evidence of her fate. While the Joyner family had recently relocated to Florida from Michigan, Gail seemed to be adjusting well and was described as friendly and outgoing, with many new friends. She left no indication that she was considering running away, and she didn't take any possessions with her. Joyner's parents suspected that she might have been abducted by an acquaintance or that a stranger might have lured her into a car by expressing interest in Bandit. Joyner's sister, Linda, reported that a man in a white car attempted to lure her hours before Gail's disappearance, indicating that a predator might have been stalking the area. Suspects In the fall of 1973, John Paul Witt and Gary Tillman confessed to the kidnapping and murder of 11-year-old Jonathan Kushner in nearby Tampa. Police were unable to establish a link between Joyner's disappearance and Witt's execution. According to the book Blind Fury, serial killer Gerald Stano confessed to killing Joyner, but later recanted. Stano's first confirmed murder took place in 1973, and most of his crimes took place in eastern Florida, more than 100 miles from Joyner's home. In addition, Stano made many dubious confessions. He would be executed in 1998. According to linked sources, two additional people have confessed to Joyner's murder but have not been publicly identified by police. The big question that arises for me, and is discussed in the Linked Trace Evidence podcast, is why do police keep information secret after so many decades? If these suspects are dead, there seems to be little purpose in keeping their confessions secret. If they're alive, they're likely to be at least 70 years old, and might not live long enough to actually be convicted of anything. If I were a family member of a missing person, I imagine I'd want to know as much as possible about the case, even the dead ends. Even the false confessions. It might not solve the case or bring resolution, but it's something tangible that might shed some light in the darkness.